Uh, we're back at the Media Reform Rally with one of the co-organizers, uh, Natalie Fenton, professor at Goldsmiths, who is quite happy to have a actually quite successful uh, event and it's al also finished, so the stress is over. Maybe can you, can you tell us how uh, was the experience of putting up this event with uh, Hacked Off and other partners? Well, we've been working with Hacked Off and a whole coalition of pressure groups for the last nine months. So it was great for us to see all that work come to fruition, but it was even more impressive to see the public response. We had uh, hundreds more people that we had to turn away who had actually wanted to be here tonight. So for us, it was a real kind of finger on the public pulse. This is what the people are thinking. They are angry. People do want change. And now we've got to, the important thing is to mobilize those feelings into a genuine movement for media reform. Yes, I think it's quite interesting to see the paradoxical situation we are. It's a momentum for change brought by the worst case uh, of abuse in uh, uh, politics and journalism uh, collusive. And uh, what's the best strategy to build on this momentum? I think you have to see it in the whole you have to move away from thinking about it as just a problem with journalists and look at it as a systemic issue. Uh, all the issues about the relationship between the police, the relationship between politicians, are about media power. And media power doesn't just doesn't reside with journalists. It actually resides with owners and corporations and monopolies. So the, the approach has to be a very brave one that will tackle, that will take power away from media moguls that already have it. Now that is a really huge step and it will require explicit regulation. So remove the concentration and the centralization of power in the media industry, that's what you're saying? Yeah, if you want plurality, which is really what we have to have, we have to remove the ability of a single media organization to dominate uh, and really kind of stymie democracy in all sorts of ways. So the only way to do that is to say you can only have a small amount of concentration of media ownership. Once you've got that, you know, th th that's it. There's a lid on it. There is no more. You can't allow the likes of Murdoch to sweet talk his way through um, politicians who want favorable coverage into just ignoring the laws of concentration that already exist or sidestepping them in some way. They have to be stronger, they have to be implemented, and we have to actually abide by them. Now that's, we've had them in the past, we just haven't abided by them. But I think now there is, in the past, there wasn't this public fury about the situation. If we can really channel that fury, we can, uh, the politicians will respond to that, and we will get a, a, a system that we can rally behind and hope will deliver an accountable and democratic media. And in a parallel sub on a parallel subject, uh, citizen journalism, that you might also uh, be very aware of being what you're teaching in at Goldsmiths, uh, in an alternative, one of the solutions, do you think it can bring one of the solutions uh, to get the message out there without going through the same channels? You know, alternative journalism is great. Citizen journalism is a really important channel. But the problem with citizen journalism is they barely get paid. And so you we need a press and a journalism that is day in, day out, doggedly pursuing truth and holding power to account. Now, I think it's wrong to rely on citizen journalists to do that because there comes a point when you've got to pay the mortgage or you've got to pay the rent and you've got to eat. And, and why should we rely on individuals to do this voluntarily? They're great. There will always be a compliment. We need journalism paid professional, daily, day in, day out, persistent journalism that will do this job and, and that we can rely upon. So I certainly can relate to uh, the uh, aspect of uh, being uh, in this situation day in, day out. Um, so one final question is, what's the plan uh, exactly? Because we heard a hack of a colleague call calling to arms, uh, basically, to recruit the most, uh, most uh, number of people. Um, what exactly can we do as a citizen, a normal citizen, to push, you talk about postcards, uh, things like that, C what can we do uh, as a normal citizen to help you, uh, or help your colleagues achieve your uh, agenda? Well, you know, what we have to do 
in terms of political lobbying is convince the politicians that they can't just follow the industry line. The only way they're going to do that is if they think the power of the people's voice is stronger than the power of the industry voice. So we have to shout in all sorts of ways. We have to you know, open the windows and scream, we're mad, we want change, we want something different. Now that means kind of traditional campaigning. Lots of public meetings, lots of writing, lots of rallies, lots of demonstrations, lots of things which will really make politicians open their eyes and see if we do this, we might win a few votes. I mean, that's what they're in it for. You know? Which is the website to uh, get all this information? If you go to the Hacked Off website or the Coordinating Committee for Media Reform, we both have great websites. You'll find all the information on our proposals that we've put to Leveson and all the seminars and events that are occurring. I would urge anybody, anywhere, hold a public meeting, come to us, we'll provide the speakers, and let's get the message out there. Okay, thank you so much, Natalie Fenton, for talking to Vision on TV. Uh, that was the last one uh, of uh, the speakers' interviews for tonight. You can find all the videos on uh, Vision on TV. Thank you very much for watching.